Hello, SGD. Uh, in the past, I've done a number of experiments with stone, primitive tools, so like, for instance, this Egyptian flywheel drill. Uh, this is the first time I've made something proper, uh, and that is a, an offering dish or a bowl, such as those found in the 40,000 at Saqqara, which are so often brought up by, you know, impossible to do, lost ancient high technology. Notice I've got a wooden guide there just to begin the hole. I think that's the best way to do it. You can chisel out a little hole. This is a much better way. Uh, I'm using tape to hold it down. Someone could be standing on it. So uh, there's, I don't have an Egyptian workshop tool maker to, to do. This is my first experiment as well. So I'm learning along the way. So to try and be, I'm not wearing a loincloth. I'm not using water from the Nile. You'll notice that I rotate it very often because this type of drill, it has a bias. It basically has an egg shape when you drill in the line looking out from you. So it, it, it like a bike pedal, but in the line from you pointing out, it's gonna create a long shape and it's gonna be shorter in the middle. So to create a perfectly symmetrical shape, what you need to do is rotate it regularly. I, I count 100 rotations or 200 rotations and then We'll just turn at 90 degrees, 45 degrees, just to cancel out that bias. Uh, the grid I'm using is a uh, emery mix. It was high corundum before, but now because I've been recycling it, using it from previous ones, it's a mix of crushed sandstone, uh, granite, and corundum in there as well. So I have the guide, and, uh, and I need. I only use the guide to get to a certain depth because once the groove is cut in, well then the drill won't slip and move around the place. Uh, the drills that I'm using is, again, it's like that Egyptian style where there's a lot of paintings, carvings, showing the Egyptians making vases with this particular tool. I mean, um, so there you get an idea, I have a tube within a tube, so you can see that's why there's two grooves in there. and. Uh, and I'm going to use that as a guide and so now I took the guide away and I'll just be using those grooves. I shouldn't have done it, I should have gone a little bit deeper um, because it still has a tendency to slip around. This is just a shortened ver version of the longer video. Uh, I use blue tack poster putty to create a little well there just to stop the dirt going around. You could have clay and do that just a fit, like a way to keep, you know, just pile of, you know, sand and grit around it to create like a little, you know, like when you're making you put your eggs in the flour, you create that little hole in, if you know what I mean. And now I've seen, I've added a tube to it. So I have three tubes going, and then I put in a fourth one, because this is going to be the top of the dish. It's going to be it's a concave or convex, so like a, a bowl that's going to blend down, and I keep adding tubes, and once offset a little bit from the next, and then the next, and then the next. Again, I'm throwing these tools together, so I'm using tape, uh, to do this, uh, resin, wedges, copper pins. Uh, once you've done this for a while, you'd have your tools on the shelf and you'd know what's going on. And I think that every, they'd have a workshop environment, couple people on the drills, and for every few people working, they'd have a tool maker and just a general assistant um, to help them along the way. So now you see it's starting to come there, uh, come together. We've got that little eye, you know, the eye of Horus there in the middle maybe as well. And you can see on the outside that uh, next level is coming down, so it's cleaned up and dried off a little bit. This one I didn't polish. I would do it differently for the next ones. I would, as I get closer towards the end, I'd go from a coarse grit to a finer and finer grit, so that as I'm drilling, I'd also be polishing it as well. You can just got to rotate it. You know, count how many revolutions you do. You know, you can see more and more tubes being added, and just removing waste material. So this is what it's all about, removing, whether you're carving a statue or a vase or a dish, it's about removing the waste and what's the best way to do that. So you can see an idea of the tubes within tubes. It lasts quickly, but you can see that's like has a bowl shape to it. The middle one is further out than the outside. You would reverse that to do the other, the other side of the vase. So again, there you can see just getting closer and closer there you see a lot of like those grooves and trenches I'll remove those later because as I get the full setup um, and you've got the bowl shape there to hold the drill in place you can actually the, the drill wobbles so there you know it will wobble around and you can um, not just drilling straight down you're, you're using it more like a grinder and grinding away at the surface because um, as, as those grooves get widened out 
and you can move, you can pull the, the, the drill, angle it forward, angle it backward, angle it forward, backward, and then as you rotate, you just do the same, and that creates uh, that particular shape. Because I have so many drills going at once. Uh, well, anyway, um, uh, I'm not going for speed or for, you know, for maximum RPM. I'm just trying to get the learn the technique, what's the procedure uh, to do these and to get it right and then we'll move up to uh, more and more but drilling, rotate, no just inspecting it you know, um, again if you've done this a number of times you wouldn't be stopping starting as much as I would have been more of a practiced hand you know you know what's going on and yeah you'd have that experience again you know so just you know, rotate it I did it to 90 degrees, 90 degrees, really be better off to do it 45, 45, 45, maybe even like a golden angle and mix it up. There you can uh, really start to see the dish shape um, starting to emerge. It's dirt now, it's dry, you can see a little bit better. Still some ridges in there, but I'm going to start to... The drill is now moving around inside that bowl shape. It's not sticking into those trenches and so maybe it doesn't show up so well but I'm, I'm moving it backwards and forward and I'm grinding it I want the drill to wander I'm not drilling I'm grinding I'm, it's wandering around on the inside of that convex it's a concave shape I always get those two confused and I've adjusted the drill slightly so they're a bit more closer together it gives a bit more of a curved profile and now you can really start to see the smooth dish shape coming up I've left that little notch there in the middle I do grind it away a little bit more, I should, you know, for more decorative purposes. That's again one of these uh, things that are lost, you know, even pet, like how Petri's, like, how did they do this? It's quite simple actually. With the tools that the Egyptians showed themselves using, so you can see the dish shape um, really emerge, that little bump there in the middle. Now I could have gone the opposite way, but now I'm going to start drilling from the opposite side to create the, the bottom of the dish. And again, it's basically as I kind of as I cut out the, the dish, it just reverse on the other side. You, the outside is should go deeper. I think I've started a groove. Just with that smaller groove, I can then start adding drills, um, larger ones. But that's just a guide, so it's just to stop the drill moving around. And again, it's just a process of drilling, drilling. Start getting out, starting to exactly the same on the back as on the front. Uh, just more there, it's cleaner, so you can see it again. I'm not polishing this one, I would change the grit as I got closer to the end, add finer and finer grit sizes, and I would polish it at the same time that I'm finishing it off. So you can see again, you notice that inner tubes are further back from the outer tubes, exactly the same process. More drilling, more drilling. And uh, okay, so that's the process. And uh, it's pause. So along the way, I'll, I'll show it in the uh, shortened compilation video. But I use the you know, tubes within tubes, and then to get profiles, I would fold over these teeth. And so you know how it goes from cutting a straight tube, and then you can get a flattened or a curved surface just to make it a lot shorter so you don't have to do a lot of grinding and sanding later. Uh, so for instance this outside tube was an old recycled part but uh, in there along the way you know, it's very expensive to get the copper tubing because you have to buy it in big lengths and so I couldn't get it all in the size that I wanted so uh, some of them I made. So that's just a sheet of copper and Take the string off, and so you know, how did they make tubes? Well, you just get a copper sheet, go to a tree trunk, bang it around the outside, and um, now I was in the because I'm not trying to recreate an ancient Egyptian tool shop because they they made chips and jewelry and all sorts of wonderful, beautiful things. Uh, so a copper tube is the least of it, so I was using tape um, along the way, but for those, because uh, I was experimenting, so I would need to adjust the tubes, I didn't know exactly what would be the method, they didn't have tape, 
uh, but they had resin, they could have used pins, they could have used wedges, bitumen, cordage, fabric. Yeah, and so for them to you know, make these tubes, and I was you know, with a limited supply, so in a tool shop where you're producing these vases and dishes constantly, I think you'd have your tools on hand, you know, you'd have a tool maker you know, for every five or ten workers would there be a tool maker who just you know does the tools for them have them on the shelf a lot of the time uh, and so not like, unlike me constantly testing remaking experimenting so they've done it it's on the shelf they can make small adjustments easy enough and again the the tubing is just it's just you know apart from making a copper sheet uh, making a copper tube is the easiest thing um, going around there Again, I made a weight out of concrete. Uh, well, they make one out of sandstone. There's other versions where they just fill up bags with sand and have them going around. Uh, because I just, I had that other handle and also made this crank handle as well. These are all things that are well, you know, if, if a ship, if they can make ships, they can, you know, make, make these tools and have them. And again, you'd have, uh, you know, on the shelf. And this is just a hand drill, so you would have had. Uh, you can make a simple frame, very simple, basic, uh, other ways to improve it, the method as well. So that's another point worth um, bringing up. Okay, by this time my hands were completely, I haven't done work like this for a long time and so I don't, I don't have calluses anymore and so my hands were completely blistered and in pain and agony. And What I should have noted, because I have such a large diameter tube there, that smaller flywheel handle is great for smaller but as you get to a larger diameter tube well the circle created by that smaller handle is smaller than the tube itself so you don't have good leverage and so I'm going to shift to a crank handle with a I could have the same type of drill I just would have a bigger branch wider branch but I've shifted to a crank handle now uh, it's the circle it's wider than the, it just so much easier and it doesn't have yeah my hands were in agony the blisters um, it was a yeah, blistery mess my hands were so much. Uh, it's moving along again the different uh, tubes now I'm, I'm folding those out so it's not drilling a, a hole straight down it's grinding out at an angle and creating that curve shape. Uh, so I think so, yeah, very simple methods um, in the full video I didn't you know I would have that crank handle I just attached dodgy as well I will just experiment doing this on the fly to get the process I'd improve it a lot in speed and efficiency as well um, to do it more. Notice those little cracks, that ridge on the outside, I want to remove it. That's between the drill sides, so I, I, those chips. I was, I was hoping it would break out even more, but the stone was harder than... Well, again, now you can see I'm using that, folding those tubes out, getting the profile going. That crank handle for larger diameter tubes, much, much better than the normal flywheel type, well, that smaller handle I was using earlier. Uh, if you, if you prefer, this one would just even work great for smaller ones as well. Though. And even notice the angle of the, of the tube as well, I'm trying to grind out at a curve at an angle. And I made a mistake, the outside tube I set too far ahead, and so before I finished removing that ridge that we saw a moment ago, it had actually cut through um, all the way and so that was a mistake and I do fix that up, uh, not with a tube, I just get a grind it with a rock, you'll see in a moment. So there's the dish finished, you'll see it in a second, and it comes out of the water and there, well, there's the just got to clean it up a bit and well that's the the blank of it done I did there was a on very on the outside you'll see there's a ridge sticking up I grind that down later just with a bit of dolerite um, sharp edge and that's the the drill part of it finished now those little pin hot that's a fraction of a millimeter that's so thin there it's really surprising oh there's the finished now those I was drilling so thin that's a a uh, fraction of a millimetre in some of those parts, very tiny, like the, the one that Petri references, or even thinner. Um, 
that ridge on the outside I was a boo-boo I didn't set the drills properly I wanted to grind that bit down before I popped it out but I was able to you know no biggie I was able to fix that and again tiny little pin that's so so thin fraction of a millimeter there because I messed up and I didn't have the drilling setting for like this on the edge of this rim here which I'd meant to or wanted to grind down before I cut all the way through or I just set the drill wrong uh, but so I had that piece sticking out and this is the final step I've got a piece of um, dolerite really hard stone and then uh, I just used that sharp edge and uh, I just went around the side scraping it out that's what that that dust is and uh, well, I could tidy it up more but uh, just to get it thin on the edge we can keep that little bit of reinforcing so you see the rims here on the inside get a little bit more strength because if you uh, again I made a boot and I drilled just a little little bit too much I'll pinhole look there's a pinhole there it's getting bigger well this is so delicate and it's so thin it's a fraction of a millimetre uh, thin in there, so I was surprised. Next time I'll, I'll do a bit more carefully, take my time a little bit more, uh, I'll actually check it a little bit more often. Some, you know, just once you start drilling and get a good speed going, you sort of should pause and check a little bit more. But that's the, the dish. Profile again, first attempt. Lathe tool marks. And just how, well, you're really surprised, you know, how ridiculously thin it is uh, without breaking it. Or I don't have a decent um, set of, you know, you need them really good set of calipers to measure that tiny tiny little gap there uh, next time as well so the way I've got this nice curve there well I was going for it on the other side but that's from that first pinhole emerge and so then it was well just that's so thin if I was to put any pressure there almost for sure break it and don't stop and do too much work on the back once that emerge I just had to do what I could before we ended up breaking it it's so light as well uh, probably if I you know, spent a Another hour or so going around with the stone grinding that down to get that fin on the edge but I'm happy with that for the moment. Next, in the next ones I'll, you know, it's not the success that teaches you, it's the mistakes that you make. Number one, and uh, what was the total time? About nine hours of filming time. Two hours of that was just wasted, at least. Uh, and of that other six hours, with better, um, more efficient methods, and taking advantage of that multi-tube system, uh, I'll be able to knock one of these out in four hours. So those large alaba uh, alabaster vases, uh, they could make them easily one a day. Uh, once you have your tools set up and your equipment right, you've got all your technique after you've made half a dozen or so, you'll get really good at it. And so the, of the 40,000 stone vessels found in Satara, uh, most of those being alabaster, but people focus on the small collection of granite and basalt and diorite ones, I think all 40,000 therefore, well, they don't show the ones that aren't so good, and yeah, 
if I know that large number. So if you have 10 people uh, working, that's all 10 a day, 300 days a year, so two months off per year. It's 3,000 a year. Uh, if you have, you know, all the, so those numbers at, at Satara, just not a problem. Just not a problem at all. And then the next step would be the higher quality vases. Olga from the Science Against Smith channel has been making some. She only uses bone, stone and wood as her tools and with this multi-tube and the only like, complaint you could make is well it takes a long time. Um, then she lit, she got one hand tied behind her back. If I were to do it with this multi-tube system, we're going to demonstrate that next, you'll be able to produce those larger vases in a considerably shorter of time. I don't know exactly how long because making the handles uh, would be, a, I've got an idea how to shorten that down and so that uh, let's demonstrate that in the future that's coming up.